Chapter 29. Clay landed beside Tsunami on the grate and then jumped back as Kestrel's yellow eyes glared through the bars at him. What are you doing here? She snarled. Rescuing you, Tsunami snapped back, against my will. Stand back, Peril said, reaching for the metal lattice work. She laced her claws through the thick bars and the sharp smell of melting iron filled the air. Clay had never seen Kestrel look so uncertain before. She watched Peril with an uneasy expression. Flicking her forked tongue in and out, Peril kept her own eyes fixed on the bars. They were much thicker than the delicate birdcage Sunny was in and took longer to burn through. I thought you were dead, Kestrel said finally. I thought you were dead, Peril answered without any warmth in her voice. I heard Scarlet had a lethal new champion, Kestrel said. I didn't know it was you, Peril shrugged. I guess I didn't need you. I turned out all right without you. Clay and Tsunami exchanged glances. All right, wasn't exactly how Clay would have described Peril. Queen Scarlet took care of me, Peril went on. She found me the black rocks I needed to give me a purpose and a place to live. Black rocks, Kestrel broke in. What black rocks? Hey, a pair of Skywing guards came charging out of the nearest tunnel. Stop. One of them made the hissing fire breath noise that shot a bolt of flame at Tsunami. Clay flung himself in the way and felt the fire blast his scales. Hot pain flashed through him and then faded a moment later. He shook himself as the red glow ebbed from his scales and looked up into the guard's shocked face. Tsunami lunged at the other guard, slashing his side and then slamming her tail into his head. He staggered back and threw himself on her with his large wings beating back her defense. At the same time, Clay's guard attacked him. They grappled and he felt her talons rake the wounds that were still healing on his back. He threw her off with a fierce heave. She skidded into the wall just as the last bar snapped and Kestrel rose, huge and angry, out of her cell. Clay had forgotten how big Kestrel was. Her red scales were scraped and chipped in places where the chains had pinned her down. Her talons looked blunted as if she'd been clawing at the walls of her prison. Kill them and let's go, she roared. Peril darted toward the guard who had Tsunami pinned. He let go of her, but it was too late. Peril's talons caught him and sliced through his neck, leaving black scorch marks behind and bubbled and smoked. He tried to scream and she raked his throat again, burning through the flesh and scales like they were paper. Clay felt sick to his stomach. He was glad he eat, hadn't eaten anything in a while. He looked down at the guard he'd been fighting. Her orange eyes were watching Peril in terror. She was only a soldier fighting for her tribe and her queen. Run, he said to her. He hauled the Skywing guard up and shoved her at the tunnel. She didn't hesitate. In a flash of red and gold, she was gone. He turned and saw Peril's face. She knew he'd been protecting the guard, a total stranger from her. She knew now for certain how he felt about what she did. Stupid worm, Kestrel hissed from behind him. She'll raise the alarm. Queen Scarlet will catch us in moments. Queen Scarlet is probably dead, Tsunami said sharply. And don't talk to Clay that way. Just follow us and stop talking. She launched herself up toward the sky. Clay met Peril's eyes again. Her claws opened and closed, reaching toward him. And then she pulled them back. Come on, he said to her, trying to put understanding in his voice that he didn't feel. They lifted off after Tsunami, copper and brown and red wings glowing in the, as the sun reached them. Clay burst into the air and banked sharply toward the waterfall. He could feel Peril's heat close on his tail. The rocky cliff flashed by beside them as they dropped toward the base of the waterfall. Tsunami led them closer to the bellowing water, whisking through the spray. Clay closed his eyes for a moment, turning his face into the mist of droplets. The sounds of the palace faded behind them, swallowed by the waterfall's roar as they plummeted farther and farther. This waterfall was taller than the one Clay and Tsunami had encountered on their way out of the mountain. It bounced over outcroppings of rock, divided into smaller cascade, poured in long straight sheets, and then shot out in bursts like dragons of water, lashing out with their claws. At the bottom, Clay saw a glittering ice clear lake with the Diamond Spray River crawling out the out other side through sloping hills east and south toward the sea. Stubby trees and ragged scrubland, brown and green, edged the lake at the base of the mountain. Tsunami angled toward the dark gap in the wall near the bottom of the waterfall. As they drew closer, Clay saw a glint of gold as Sunny peeked anxiously out. They touched down on the muddy banks of the lake in a thick cups of tree beside a small cave nearly hidden by the roaring wall of water. 
As Peril landed, the grass around her talons shriveled to ash. She looked down at the blackened earth and curled her tail in close to make her imprint as small as possible. Kestrel, Sunny cried, you're all right. No, thanks to you five, Kestrel growled, lashing her tail. You wanted so badly to be free. Now do you see why we had to protect you? One of her wings snagged on a tree branch and she wrestled it loose, growling. You're welcome, Tsunami sat back. We could have left you in the Sky Kingdom. I would have. Clay couldn't resist the mud squelching between his claws. He threw himself to the ground and rolled, letting the warmth coat his arena dusty, aching scales. Good grief, Clay. Yuck, Glory said. She edged toward the lake and spread her wings to catch the sunlight. Careful, Tsunami reached to pull her back. If they're looking for us, they'll definitely spot a bright purple dragon from the air. Glory failed her flared her rough at Tsunami. I am not bright purple. Queen Scarlet called this my violet mood. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry, Tsunami said. I meant to say they'll definitely spot a moody violet dragon from the air. You are the epitome of hilarious, Gloria, Glory said. Anyway, I can take care of that. Her wing scales shimmered as if they were drawing in the sunlight and the purple color started to break up like water being poured into paint. Soon she was the color of the muddy ground below her. Happy, she asked Tsunami. I want to know what my cool power is, Tsunami muttered. You've got camouflage scales and venom spinning teeth. Clay is immune to fire. Starflight apparently has big dragons waiting in the sky to save him whenever he gets scary. What do I get? Clay is immune to fire, Sunny asked. What? And did you say venom spitting teeth? Yeah, Clay answered. I'm afraid you'll have to be nicer glory from now on, Sunny. Sunny snapped her wings in outrage. I'm always nice to, oh, you're teasing me, she said as she choked with laughter. She mushed a giant talon full of mud onto his face. Clay ducked away and noticed Peril watching with drooped wings and a sad expression. See, we can take care of ourselves, Tsunami said to Kestrel. You didn't even know that what Clay and Glory could do. You didn't think they were we were good for anything, but it was your own fault for keeping us underground and treating us like eggs. Oh, we did everything wrong. Kestrel said scathingly, go ahead and blame us. But we did as the talents of peace asked. You would probably all be dead if we hadn't. Tsunami lifted her chin. We're not going back to the talents of peace, she said. We're not, Sunny squeaked. Glory gave her a scornful look. Oh, Kestrel said. She bent her head to avoid the branches and gave Tsunami a sharp orange glare. What is your magnificent plan, if I may ask? We're going to find our home, Tsunami said, and our parents. We're going to see this war firsthand instead of reading about it in scrolls. And then we'll figure out for ourselves if we're going to do anything about it. But Tsunami, Sunny whispered, tugging on her wing. The prophecy, we have to. Shh, Clay said. He drew her back away from the wrathful look on Kestrel's face, just in case there was any fire breathing about to happen. Privately, he agreed with Sonny. They couldn't just ignore the prophecy. Something had to be done about the war, and everyone was waiting for the Dragonettes to do it. He kept thinking of the prisoners singing the song of the Dragonettes as if it would save them. But he also agreed with Tsunami. They couldn't do anything until they were out in the real world, figuring out what could be done on their own, without the talons of peace keeping them away from their families and everything that made stopping the war important. There was a pause as Kestrel and Tsunami glared at each other. Smoke puffed from Kestrel's nose, drifting away on the air. Clay glanced at Peril, but her eyes were fixed on her mother. Fine, Kestrel snorted unexpectedly. What do I care? I'm done with you. I've done everything that was asked of me, and all I have to show for it is a pack of ungrateful lizards. Go find your precious family. I don't care what happens to you. Oh, Kestrel, Sonny said, climbing over and hugging Kestrel's leg. You don't mean that. You know we appreciate everything you did for us. Clay caught Glory and Tsunami rolling their eyes at each other. You're on your own now, Kestrel said. She pried Sunny off and stepped back toward the lake. And good riddance, Peril. Are you coming? Peril hesitated. I thought you were coming with us, Clay said. Peril's eyes brightened. Over my charred dead body, Tsunami growled, whacking Clay with one of her wings. Why not, Glory said, her eyes on a passing butterfly. Maybe Peril's the missing dragonette you all need for the prophecy. Your wings of sky, Clay blinked at her. Wow, do you think so? Tiny scarlet flame shapes flickered around Glory's ears and she shrugged. Oh, could I be? Peril breathed. No, Kestrel spat. The largest egg in Mountain High, Glory quoted. quoted if you hatched with a twin, your egg must have been huge. Her eyes stayed on the butterfly instead of looking at the other dragonettes. 
That's true, Peril said. Maybe I'm part of your destiny. She looked at Clay hopefully. Not a chance, Kestrel said. Peril and her brother hatched over a year before you misbegotten worms. The prophecy speaks of five dragonettes hatching together on the brightest night. Face it, your sky wing died in an egg. I saw the broken shell and the murdered dragon who carried her. Clay looked down at his muddy talons. Kestrel was right. He hadn't remembered the exact words of the prophecy. There was no way Peril could be the fifth dragonette. Sorry, he said to her. Her copper wings slumped. You can come with us anyway, he offered. I can't, she said. I have to go back for the black rocks. Tell me about these black rocks, Kestrel ordered. You must know, Peril said. I need to eat them every day in order to live. Kestrel lashed her tail, uprooting one of the bushes without noticing. More of Scarlet's lies, she spat. You don't need anything like that. But I stopped taking them and I got sick, Peril said. Poison in your food, Kestrel said. One of Scarlet's favorite tricks. Peril looked up at the palace on the mountain. Smoke curled from her copper scales and her claws dug into the ground. Come with me, Kestrel said roughly. I'm not much, but I'm better than Scarlet. She reached toward Peril and then saw the scorch marks on her own palms and pulled back. Peril ducked her head, huddling into her wings. Where are you going, Kestrel? Sonny asked. None of your business, Kestrel answered. Sonny sat back, looking hurt. Kestrel took a step toward the lake and rubbed her talons against a rock to sharpen them. She glanced back at Sonny. But I suppose, she said, when you realize you need me, you can send me a message through the dragon of Jade Mountain. Not that I'll come running, mind you. You deserve all the trouble that's coming to you. Before you go, Tsunami said, tell us what you know about our eggs and where they came from. Kestrel snorted. Well, there's no surprises with you. Webb stole your egg from the Sea Wing Queen's own hatchery. Tsunami, Sunny gasped. Your royalty, just like in the story. Tsunami twitched her tail, looking surprised and thoughtful. Morosir brought a Starflight's egg, Kestrel said. Dune found Sunny's egg in the desert, hidden near the scorpion den, and our big strong hero came from somewhere around the Diamond Spray Delta near the sea, where the lowest born mudwings crawl. Clay turned to look at the river that flowed from the lake. His heart started pounding with excitement. His home, his family, they were closer than he'd imagined. What about me, Glory asked. Kestrel shifted her wings in a shrug. I have no idea. Webb scrounged you up somewhere after we lost the Skywing egg. I never cared where because I knew you weren't important. Oh, go away, Tsunami bursts out. Everything you say is hurtful and mean. Everything I say is true, Kestrel said. I don't think you'd be good for me, Peril said, staring up at her. I never imagined you like this. Kestrel hunched her shoulders. I am the way life has made me. Take it or leave it. She spread her wings because I'm going now and you can come with me or not. Remember, Clay said to Peril, she tried to save you. She's not the kindest dragon, it's true. But look, she cared about you enough to do this. He took one of Kestrel's talons and opened it so Peril could see the scorch marks burned across her palms. Kestrel snapped her teeth at him and yanked her arm back. Peril shook her head. I'm not ready, she said. Maybe one day we'll find each other again. Kestrel's tail whipped back and forth, churning up the ground. Well, suit yourself. Her orange eyes shifted balefully from one dragonette to the next and landed on clay. Listen, Mudwing, for all your noble talk, you're not going to be any use to the others if you can't fight and kill to defend them. Just think about that. Her words stung like they always did. His hopefulness wilted a little. Clay felt Sunny nudge him sympathetically. Tsunami took a threatening step toward Kestrel, but before she could say anything, the large red dragon spread her wings and launched herself into the sky. She banked over the lake and flew off to the west without looking back.